In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this lovely dress with tears on the skirt part. Also included is how you can attach an already made bra cup to a transparent outfit and conceal it perfectly. You're welcome to Kema Freak. My name is Kemi Omorugbe. If you're a returning viewer, I appreciate you so, so much. If you are new here, please subscribe to the channel so that you can join the farm. I upload holistic content about my life as a fashion designer from tutorial to vlogs to fashion business talks. Without further ado, let's do this. This tutorial I'll be making use of my good old basic bodies block. You can check out the tutorial for that on the channel. My fabric of choice is this organza print, very lovely. I'll also be needing a layer of tool to give the skirt more volume and I'm also making use of spider lining to act as the base for the skirt. Then I'll be needing my bias tape, I ended up not using this color and also you will need an already made bra cup for the cup of course. Now on the basic bodies, I already made some markings but just ignore them. First, I lowered my under bust measurement just a little bit because of the fitting I was aiming for, okay? You don't have to do that. Now let's label our chest line, bust line, under bust line and the waist line. So like I mentioned, the under bust line is just half an inch lower than it normally is, okay? Now the neckline dimension I had initially was 3.5 inches by 3.5 inches but of course we are making a deep V neckline so I marked about 8 inches downward and at the side I wanted the shoulder width to be thinner so I just took out 1 inch on both sides of the shoulder line and that left me with a shoulder width of about 2 inches so at the armhole side like I said I took out one inch again and redrew the armhole of the bodies. Now let's contour these bodies. I'm tightening the under bust. Initially I made use of 2.5 inches. That's one one quarter on both sides of the dart line, both on the under bust line and on the waistline but I ended up adjusting this to just two inches okay so I usually change this depending on the size of the person I'm working with but on the average two inches that's one inch of both side works and I'm connecting my new dart legs to the bust point using my smooth curve so because I took out extra one inch at this point it was 1.5 inches so i took that extra one inch you have to replace it back at the side to avoid deficits when you're joining so i then connected my new side to the chest line there we have it now you can choose to make use of the bust dart or you convert it transfer it to the shoulder or to the armhole as you wish but i will be transferring mine to the waist that so the only that we are going to have on this upper bodies will be at the waist okay so to achieve that i needed to cut out my pattern so that i can slash through the dart line and close up the bust that That's done, I can now cut out the rest of this pattern and cut out my dart as well and we'll be ready for the next step. It was at this stage I decided to make use of just one inch on both sides instead of one one quarter that I initially used. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here, just making the adjustment so I can cut out my dart. One of the prominent details at the front of this dress you are making is the band, okay? So I need to cut out the band and the band extends from our under bust line to the waist. I will just cut the two sides of the dark leg and tape it together. 
you need to label this because you can see it's just a rectangle and it, it's easy to get it mixed up okay so there we have our pieces for the front now let's look at what we need to do for the back the back pattern doesn't need much alterations just recreate your neckline so that your shoulder can be thin <laughs> just like it is for the front okay i took out one inch on both sides of the shoulder so that we can have a two inches wide shoulder at the back as well to match up with what we want and what we have at the front already and you have to redraw the armhole like so tighten the center back by half an inch three quarter of an inch or one inch as you please i make use of half an inch on the average and then return back whatever you take at the side and your pattern is ready to be cut Now once this is done, these two pattern sets are ready to be transferred to fabric. So as usual, we'll be adding seam allowances. For the back pattern, I added half an inch at the armhole, shoulder and neckline, then the base of the pattern, while at the side, I added one inch side seam allowance. The center front for this will not be on fold, so I'm adding half an inch seam allowance to the center front, the neckline, the shoulder, the armhole, and the base of the pattern, while I'm adding one inch side seam allowance. Here is the pattern for the band, and for this, the center has to be on fold, and I'll add half an inch side seam allowance at the top and the base, and one inch side seam allowance. There we have it. It is always advisable to cut the more stable fabric first, so it can be placed on the more slippery fabric. So in this case, I'm placing my spider lining on the organza, so I can, you know, transfer the pattern to the organza as well. Now we have all our pieces ready for the bodies and I'll set this aside so we can plan the skirt. On the skirt part of things, I will start by putting my spider lining on fold and when folded we have 22 inches width then it has to be long enough for the length you're making okay the length i'm working with is 44 inches sorry 42 inches then i added extra one inch allowance at the bottom okay so i made 43 inches mark right there so next go ahead and measure the waistline okay with the conference divided by four like i mentioned this fabric is on fold then mark it with additional one inch side seam allowance and then I drew a slant. We are basically constructing an A-shaped skirt, okay? So I drew a slant from that waistline till I get to the edge of my fabric that way. So this is the front A-line skirt, which will serve as a base for the steps or the layers we'll be making for this skirt. You really will not like a straight, sharp edge at that corner. So raise up the hem by two inches along the side then blend it into the other part of the hem of the skirt so now we're cutting out this pattern <laughs> let's call it a pattern or the base of the skirt now we have our a-line skirt for the front i'll be using this as a pattern to cut out that of the back. A major difference is that we have a zip allowance at the center back, right? So I, I just need that one inch zip allowance there and I will go ahead and cut the rest. Here are my curves and I want to create something to wrap it. If you have a stretchy fabric, you can just wrap it over it without sewing. But I folded my curve like so and 
I just wanted to get the curve at the center of the cup. I was not so particular about the measurement around the cup just yet. So just this side I'm particular about. I got that curve right and I have four pieces here of the same size guys. I just want to be sure it is enough to wrap over it then we'll trim off the rest of the sides. So once that was done I went ahead and sealed two pieces together as we have two right. And I pinned it on my cup. I used a nude fabric so that it can conceal the white part of the cup. Okay, you can also get a nude cup and you can keep this entire process. So after doing that, I went ahead to trim the excess. This is what we want at the end of the day. We want to conceal this cup inward. So I'll set that aside. Let's go on to the actual sewing process. I'm starting by sewing my dart. That's the waist that for this front pieces. I'm doing the same thing on the spider lining and on the organza. But I won't be able to treat the lining and the organza as a single piece because I want to insert a cup in between these two. So I'll be sewing them separately. And at the back as well, I will be sewing my dart. Okay, just the usual waist that at the back. That was done here and this is what I have, okay, separate pieces right here. As for my cups, after trimming, I overlocked using a nude thread, but I realized at this stage that because the thread was slightly different from the color of the cup, it was still obvious inside the organza. I don't want to make use of another layer of lining for this, so because of that, I went ahead to stretch out two nude tool on the cup just to conceal that part i stretched out two layers of tool on each cup and i realized that that helped a great deal in concealing the cup so after stretching it out i went ahead to cut out all of the excesses then i seal round the cup with a straight stitch this time not an overlocking stitch to help it stay in place and like you know tools or mesh fabric don't fray okay so it's safe here are our cups i'll have to sew them onto the spider lining i want to make sure that i still have my seam allowance at the bottom that half an inch there and i position this cup in a way that the deepest part aligns with the bust point on the lining piece okay and i still have about half an inch at the center as well you do the same thing for the other side make sure that they look alike okay <laughs> just make sure you don't have one so different from the other pain all through painting using your pain will help you a great deal to position these two pieces correctly so after that is done i went ahead to sew it on the cup okay this is what i have on the inside and i'll be sewing down along the dart line like so i'll sew throughout the length for both cups that is done here and this is our cup well positioned well placed they look alike no problem we are fine <laughs> now this is our back piece i'll be sewing the front and back piece together along the shoulder but we want to do it in a way that we don't have rough edges anyway okay so we're going to be using the lining for the back to conceal everything so what we'll do is okay just follow this step we are sewing these two shoulder pieces together or shoulder lines together and we have to make them right side facing each other right so we we don't want to sew this way directly so we are going to use the lining for the back piece to sandwich the front basically what we are doing is we are sandwiching the front piece between the organza and the lining for the back piece i hope that makes sense so here we have it sorry about the lighting here i just needed to continue this tutorial even though uh power supply went off okay <laughs> light was seized up nepa so um now i'll be sewing the two sides of the front together and the seam will be on the outside okay so you see that seam i'm not sewing it on the inside i see it on the outside now i want to use my bias tape to create that details on the neckline so we are putting the right side of the bias tape and sewing it against the wrong side of the fabric just watch this so it's going to be from the inside 
and we're going to sew by half an inch so remember we have half an inch day even though the seam allowance on the bias tape is just a quarter of an inch you can go ahead and trim these allowances to quarter of an inch or you sew first then go ahead and trim it so i'm starting from the back neck line and i will extend through the shoulder continue sewing till i get to the center front then i'll continue with the allowance we left I'm making two for this front and back pieces so but we are doing it from one the left side to the center then from the right side you come to the center again and continue on this allowance okay you separate these two allowances you can try pressing steam pressing of course with a cloth over your organza just to make it look neat now this is what I have been trying to explain <laughs> so we have the same allowance here i have some excesses here because i sew by half an inch i'll go ahead and trim off this excess so that we just have a quarter of an inch you can go ahead again and press before you do the second lap of this process so what i'll be doing here is turning my bias tape to the front so that it can serve as like a decoration at the front part of the dress so I'm doing the same thing from the center back to the center front to the waistline of the center front here we have it so you want to do it in a way that you don't have any line showing at the center front guys I just hope this makes sense <laughs> so I'll do the same thing again just the same process for the armhole and there we have it so at this stage I'll be sewing the band onto the bodies i have used bias tape to highlight the band as well i just left half an inch at the top and at the base to serve as like a design right so i'm going to sew that half an inch onto the upper bodies in such a way that my seam is just beside the bias tape that way it looks neat and beautiful here we have it sewn down and at this stage we are going to join the front and back pieces together along the side i have a one inch wide side seam allowance here so i'll just be sewing by that side seam allowance you can go ahead and take your measurements to ensure that they are accurate and this is what you have now here is our a-line skirt i went ahead to join the sides together by one inch if you cut with half an inch go ahead and sew down by half an inch and this is the center back i'll open it up like so so that we can mark out the position of our layers i'm doing this because it will guide me in knowing the length of the layers i should cut okay i need to do this before cutting out my layers so the entire length i have here is 42 inches plus the one inch seam allowance so i divided 32 by three so that i can then mark on the fabric okay so i think i got 14 inches there about so i'll be measuring 14 inches 0.5 because i have half an inch seam allowance there and marking it out then i'll draw out straight lines that will guide me when i'm pleating the layers Here I have the second layer. The first layer will be at the waistline. So this is the second layer. I went ahead to mark another one to give me the third layer. And now, and now I'm measuring the length I need to cut out on my organza for pleats. Okay, the length of the layers. So for this, I needed to flow over the hem of the base. Okay, we don't want the spider lining to be showing on above the organza, right? So I'll be cutting out this measurement on fabric. So for all of the layers, I think I ended up cutting 18 inches. You want it to lap over that line. You don't want to cut exactly that line. In addition, you also need the width of the tears. So that will help you calculate the amount of fabric you need to cut to get the fullness that you want. For the first layer, that's the waist 
measurement 31 inches for the second layer i made use of 47 inches and for the third layer i have 62 inches now because i'm making pleats i need to have multiples of that that it has to be much more than that and initially I actually multiply each measurement i took by three just to get the fullness but i realized it was too full for my liking if you don't mind you can have that level of fullness so i decided to multiply each layer by two so instead of 31 i cut 62 inches for the first layer and that's what i'll be pleating then for the second layer i multiplied 47 by 2 for the third layer i multiplied 62 by 2 so right here i'm just doing my cutting i cut all of the layers exactly the same at this stage in fact all of the layers i cut the same not just at this stage and also the I use the organza print to cut out the tool. So the tool will just be underneath the organza print. Nothing big. Okay. At the end of the day, you see how I then trimmed off the tool just to make sure it's slightly shorter than the length of the organza print. So first I seal the tool on the organza print so that i can treat them as a single layer okay the plates are together i didn't play them separately but there's nothing against pleating them separately anyways so here we go i'll be pleating my first layer once i'm done i'll move on to the second and to the third and we'll be done with this part of the skirt Here our skirt is ready. This is what I have. My three layers of organza and two. And from the wrong side, this is what we have. Once again, apologies for this lighting, okay? Pardon me. <laughs> now, back to these bodies. I'll be sewing the bodies and the skirt together by half an inch. Our measurements are... You know the same just make sure your side seam still align even though it won't make any difference <laughs> it won't show on the outside so i went ahead and sealed these two together by half an inch and um let's see what we have here we go so done 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 here and the next step is to fix the zip at the center back and sew up the rest of this piece and the big reveal is here <laughs> here we have it mm -hmm. and at this stage i'm trimming off the tool just to make sure it is shorter than the organza print okay this is the final look what do you think i hope you love it are you going to give it a try -out? please drop your comments in the comment section give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't i hope i tried guys so let me know in the comment section bye see you in the next video